So welcome everybody in the region! Yay! Yay! All the way from Victoria up to Queensland. And uh, here's everybody, everyone wave. Hello. Yay. Not too fast. Yep. Hello. Yeah, nice and slowly. Nice and slowly. So hey, Brother Stephen. Brother Stephen over here. Yeah. Brother Stephen Downey is with us from the Pocket Testament League. And we're at a breakfast uh, meeting at Shiloh. And uh, you can see it's been a, a cool morning. We actually had one young man named Glenn come all the way from Kalani. It was white from Kalani to Toowoomba. And he was on a motorbike. Whoa. That's how committed he is to getting here this morning. Hallelujah. So we want to welcome all of you and, and welcome everyone who's here this morning because we have Stephen Downey from the Pocket Testament League with us. This is his last meeting uh, with us. He began with us on Thursday evening at the ministry school here at Shiloh. And we had a great night there. We had Friday lunchtime meeting here. And we had a fellowship evening out at Kabbalah last night, which was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And as I was saying before, but for the sake of the camera as well, that uh, it was a great night where Stephen was able to share. With, we had lots of contribution from all the brethren sharing about all the different aspects of ministry that's coming out of this small group, really, this, this company based in Toowoomba locally here. He outreached with Liz into Bella and now into uh, some, a workplace, workplace situation yeah. where, where she's been able to reach out with her testimony of forgiveness and of Jesus in her life. And that's actually, the fruit of that was that uh, there's been a salvation and a deliverance of one of the workers. How awesome is that? And, uh, they, and the owners of the business have testified of a spiritual shift. So there's something happening and, and we've got to begin to realise God wants to reach workers. Yep. It reminded me of a story of a man called Charles Finney, who also, he went to different places and went to different factory working places. And one place he went to, he just looked at a lady and that began to break out the revival. She began to break down in tears under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and suddenly revival came through the whole workplace. <laughs> Amen. So, God, so God's opening doors and through Liz. But let that be an inspiration for all of us and begin to pray that more doors into businesses will open where they will want their workers to hear the gospel. Amen. And that the workplace atmosphere will change. We had some testimony from Tim Peden just about the, uh, the radical thinking we're beginning to have about community homeschooling children to disciple and train children for the good works that God's prepared beforehand that they should walk in. <clears throat> That it's not about trying to educate them just so they can go to uni and get a good job and get a career and all that. Tim was sharing with us, that's actually become an idol and I, and I do believe that. Mm -hmm. that, okay. that we've thought that that's what the purpose is, right? We get our kids educated so they can go to uni, so they can get a job. No, it's much bigger than that. We're actually meant to be discipling our children so they can live for Jesus in the calling that God has for them. Amen. Which may involve uni, it may involve all that, but it might not as well. Yes. And so we need, to be, we need to be making sure we're raising our kids to actually live for Jesus and find the destiny that they have, that God has for them. Yeah. Amen. We had some testimony from Esther as a first year disciple, uh, giving, uh, coming out of school, coming out of a homeschool environment and now giving herself to discipleship. And uh, if you heard her last night and you weren't a disciple, you'd be counting the cost now to see if you really want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, and Gay was sharing about the RI and the awesome outreach that through the company here at Shiloh, there's 15 schools, 12 locally in Toowoomba, three down the range um, into uh, the Lockyer Valley. And so 15 schools being reached through this company here. And we had a whole bunch of the RI teachers stand up last night. Uh, awesome stuff. And Gay, I think is doing, is it 19? 17, 19? 18 classes that uh, Gay is doing every week. And there's been a recent school open that has been closed to RI for four years in, uh, in, in the suburb that I live in, in Rockville. And that school has opened up. We got to meet with the principal last term. And uh, everyone was saying beforehand, oh, it's very, you know, it's frosty there and they don't really like RI. But when we got to meet the principal, she said, I've been looking for someone to come and do RI. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And so it's opened up now and, and Miriam was, has been in there this last Tuesday. Hallelujah! Yes. Awesome stuff. And then Stephen Downey was able to share with us about John the Baptist in a very wonderful way because he made it very relevant to our situation, our society that we're living in right now. John the Baptist was a man who counted the cost. He knew a lot of his comments were not politically correct. 
They were, they were not what was regarded as right for the day because he was not afraid to speak against what the king of Judea was doing and even because of that he lost his head mm. but in all of that the message for us is are we willing are we willing to count the cost and are we willing to pay the price for speaking and doing what is right by the kingdom of heaven but what is right by Jesus the Messiah yes. amen into our society not bowing to political correctness not bowing to intimidation or fear for losing our lives even in some way whether it's our reputation or physically are we willing to count that cost Amen. Amen. So I spent a wonderful time with Stephen, and now I. <clears throat> I just want to put the box where it, people are going to leave. They can yep, and we and we. Yeah, anybody who needs to leave before this is a the morning is completely finished. There is a box there for a, for a love offering for Stephen. So please, yeah, give generously. Amen. So I want to invite Stephen up. Welcome. Let's welcome Stephen. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Nick. And thank you for your friendship. Yes. Really very, very valued. It's a real blessing to me and to get to know you better and better and better. And I can assure you that the association with Shiloh is very highly valued. I've been trying to sort of share with you over the few meetings how we're associated uh, in lots of ways with the sort of representatives that you have around the world. And it's very, very important to us because, you see, when you send money overseas, it's a big, big responsibility. And if you're very sensitive about the Lord's money, you're very sensitive about how it's used and how it's undertaken. For example, I met Naberto of South America three years ago in this breakfast in this room, yeah. right here. We send him about $20,000 every year. So, you know, that's really, really important. And we know that it's, he's a quality man. We know that he's got credibility. We know he loves the gospel. I've been there and lived with him for a couple of weeks. I've seen his work and his work ethic. So all of that is just very, very important. You know that the money that's going into this ministry of 100,000 gospels about every 12 months, wow. um, you know, we know it's been well used. So that, you know, it's extremely important. And then uh, we're doing the same with David Thang in Myanmar. He's associated with Shiloh. We've been sending money to him, and the last one was actually through Nick, who handed it over to him personally. That was a great thing for us. So you know, you know it gets there, because all of that's very, very important. We, you've got to know that it's been received, and uh, you've got to know that there's no corruption in it, and there's no sort of, uh, you know, dishonesty in it. It's very important. And then, of course, uh, Pastor Arif. Well. I've never actually met him, though you may have, but, you know, there's a great work going on in Pakistan and, and we trust him and the reports that we're getting are very, very good. So, look, this is, this is a great comfort to us because you can work with people who may appear to be very honest, but in fact uh, you can find out that it's not being used in the way you really intended it to be. So that's why it's, uh, I've been saying these things because we've got to be associated with reputable people, with good Christian people. <coughs> Nigeria, of course. And, and Nigeria, of course, that's another one, yes. Yeah. And you know, that I, I've met Adame, so, uh, and I met him here at this breakfast. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, look, it's all been really wonderful the way it's all worked through. Now, the other thing to share with you is uh, our brother Alberto here came to me yesterday and said, well, what about Cuba? What about Cuba? Whoa! Oh. Give a wave, Alberto. Well, I'm very happy to be able to tell you that we're prepared to commit 20,000 <laughs> Gospels of John into Cuba. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. 
Amen. You've got to get things. Amen. You've got to get things rolling. You see, and if that works out, and Brother Alberto suggests that it will, and that he's got the contacts and got the people, the pastors are there. They're willing to receive the gospels. God willing, we'll have them printed in Cuba, and we'll be able to pay the cost of that. And uh, let's see where that goes. So that's that's the point. You see. Um, our brother is here, we know him, we know what he's on about, and it's, it's just a blessing to work through him. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. So, in the Lord's will, in the next few months, we hope to get that underway. Hallelujah. And then, we're wanting to put 50,000 Gospels into Indonesia. And I've been discussing this with, with Paul, and uh, he's suggesting some contacts there that he knows about, Yos in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So we're just just sort of working on that as carefully as we possibly can, because Indonesia is the largest Muslim country in the world. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a clash going on there, there is. between Christianity and Islam, and it's a really big battle. Mm -hmm. The Lord's word needs to go into that country. Mm -hmm. So we're up for it. And uh, God's people are up for it. They're, they're, people have already said to me they're willing to make a commitment to Indonesia. So, uh, look, that's what we're going to work towards. So, hopefully, in the next few months, we'll be able to advise you that this is this is underway. So, thank you very much that I've been able to share that with you. That's that's coming from the heart, mm. and. Uh, just wanting to let you know how very important it is that we are able to work with an organisation, a movement like Shiloh. And look, I do pray that, well, of course, it's not just in this community that Shiloh is working, it's all around the world. Mm. So it's a big vision, isn't it? Amen. And the vision is still growing. And that's a great place to be in because you don't want to get comfortable. Because the moment you do that, your vision will drop. But keep moving in the Lord. That would be my encouragement to you. Now look, I was walking along a path in Israel in April. Just walking along a path. Undulating country. Bit of grass here and there with some very nice views. Just walking along a path. And I looked to the right and there was a hundred sheep. Mm -hmm. And the shepherd was there. You see, there's no fences in Israel. They have to have a shepherd. And I looked a little bit more closely at the hundred sheep. You could tell it was about a hundred. And there were some goats amongst the sheep, about a dozen of them. Remember the scriptures say the day will come when the sheep will be separated from the goats? Mm. There it was right there. <laughs> <laughs> the day came. <laughs> I mean, there it is. And I got this wonderful insight of what it would have been like for the disciples with Jesus. Just walking along the path. Yeah. Just stop, stop, come, look at this, look. Hundred sheep. Right there. And he would have told them about the sheep and the goats. And then he would have said things like, look, see there are boulders everywhere and there are stones and rocks everywhere. Look at that sheep over there as it's just getting behind the boulder. The shepherd, if he's a worker, just one of the workers, he doesn't really care very much. He's still got 99. But as that sheep gets around the boulder, it starts to wander away. Look at that happening, you know, right under their eyes. And then our Lord would have said, if that shepherd is one of the workers, he's not really going to care about that sheep. If it gets lost, well, so be it. But I'm not like that. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the great shepherd. Mm -hmm. I'm the shepherd who cares about that one lost sheep that goes astray. And why do I care about that lost sheep? Because God loves that lost sheep. Mm -hmm. I care about that lost sheep. And I'm willing to go out of my way and go looking for that lost sheep and bring it back on my shoulders, which is quite a thing to do, you know. 
to have a sheep on your shoulders and bring it back to where it belongs. Yeah. And he would have said that right there as they could see the sheep. They would have been able to see the sheep getting around the boulders and getting lost. And I thought what a great privilege it was to be a disciple at that particular time. To be taught by Jesus on the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be able to see for themselves with their own eyes the kind of things that our Lord was talking about. Yeah. And I thought that was a beautiful thing when I was able to see that. Oh, yeah. And then, um, of course, the great shepherd uh, passages in the Bible are Psalm 23 and John chapter 10. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the, sh the, the shepherds take the sheep home towards the evening and put them in the village pen, which is a place where many of the shepherds bring their sheep, mm -hmm. place them in the pen, the security guard or the watchman, as the, the Bible says, closes the gate. The shepherds go home for the night. They come back in the morning. The security guard opens the gate and the shepherd stands before all of those sheep and he calls his own sheep out by name. Wow. And they separate themselves from all the other sheep and they come to the shepherd. Then the shepherd turns around and he leads them out into the fields. And that is why David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. I don't follow the other sheep. I don't know their name. I don't know who they are. I don't follow any other shepherd. I only follow the shepherd that I belong to. Yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. And we follow him out into the fields. And he knows every one of us by name. We're not just a number. We're not anonymous. He knows each of us personally and very, very deeply. Um, now, out in the fields, if it gets too late to bring the sheep back to the shepherds, uh, back to the village pen, there are these rock enclosures, like so high, because there's lots of rocks in Israel. So they build these kind of enclosures, and it has a, an entrance, an opening, but it doesn't have a physical gate. So the shepherd brings the sheep into this enclosure and then he will lay down across the opening of that enclosure so that he literally becomes the door. Literally. For that whole night, the shepherd is the door of that enclosure. So what does John chapter 10 says? I am the door. By me if any man wants to be saved, he will come in and he will sup with the Lord. So I am the door and through that door we will be saved. A very clear understanding, very clear direction of what it means to become saved. What it means to become a Christian. We go through the door, Jesus. And that's the way to salvation. So look, the disciples got it just exactly the way it was. Very clear. No confusion, no ambiguity, just a straight message from the Lord that he was the door of the sheep. Now look, I had a lovely experience in actually seeing the valley of the shadow of death. There are these wadis which I sort of talked about the other day, these gorges that go down where the stream is at the bottom, grass on both sides of the stream, that's where the Jacob and his family, Abraham and his family, they walk through with their livestock and with their family and with their staff. They pitched a tent. The, the, the sheep were able to eat the grass and then drink the water. The family was able to pitch tents and then stay there for quite a while because of the water and everything for their livestock. So bodies were very important. But the valley of the shadow of death is a much deeper gorge. It has a stream down below and, and a path through it. But when you stand on top and you look down, it's shadowy. It's like it's dark because the sunlight doesn't get to it very, very much at all. <coughs> and so when you stand up, it's very deep. You can see that it's dark at the bottom. You can see that there's not much there that can grow because it doesn't get the sunlight. And so it's called the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. wow. 
And when you look at it, you say to yourself, there's no way a sheep could go through that valley and come out the other side on its own. It just couldn't do it. It would be completely lost and totally confused. But when you look at it again, you can say, if it's with the shepherd, it can go through the valley of the shadow of death and come out the other side. And that's the difference. It's a beautiful explanation of what is meant Amen. when we come to that time when the Lord will call us home. And I've made the commitment that I do not want to walk through the valley of the shadow of death on my own. Amen. I want to have my hand in the shepherd's hand. Amen. I want the shepherd to lead me through Amen. the valley of the shadow of death. It's a brilliant picture, you know, because it is a bit shadow, isn't it? It's, it is a sense of you're walking through a bit of darkness, and so you need help. You cannot do it on your own. We need the shepherd, and as we follow the shepherd, we will come out the other side with him. And so it's a great assurance to have your hand in the hand of the shepherd. Amen. But when you go to John chapter 10, particularly verse 28, it says something else. It says... Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of the Father's hands. And so I'm realising as I'm looking at the valley of the shadow of death, I've got my hand in the hand of the shepherd, but John 28, 10, 28 says that God's got his hand in mine too. I'm in God's hands. And what a great promise that is, to be in the hand of God as we're walking in this journey with the Lord, with the shepherd, and we're hanging on both sides. <laughs> both sides, we're, we're held on by the great shepherd. It's a wonderful blessing, isn't it? It's a wonderful assurance, and it's the reason why Christians have peace. It's the reason why we have that wonderful sense of belonging. I mean, we're not adrift because we're held very firmly in God's hand and we've decided to hang on to the Lord's hand who will bring us through oh, yeah. into his home because we're going to live with him forever. Praise God for that. Look, um, it's a great blessing to know the Lord, isn't it? Mm. I don't know what it would be like to not be a Christian now. I dare not in any moment at all want to be apart from Jesus. Amen. I want to belong to him. Mm -hmm. I want to be with him. Mm -hmm. And I want to serve him. Mm -hmm. And I'm committed to him. Mm -hmm. And look, brothers and sisters, that's, that's, that's the purpose we have. That's the direction we have. That's the commitment we have. And what a joy it is to have a saviour and a lord the Great Shepherd and the Good Shepherd. Thank you very much uh, for the lovely fellowship that I've had and thank you very much for your support and thank you very much for the, you know, this, this whole lovely relationship that we have with one another because Jesus is with us and in our midst. Mm -hmm. I praise the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So let's, let's respond in our own hearts, and some of you were here last night, so even out of last night and today, let's make a, if you feel to, let's make a commitment to Jesus, even as, as Stephen said that he had, to make a commitment that we're not going to go through alone, we're going to go through whatever, we're gonna, whatever we have to go through, putting our hand in the hand of the shepherd. Amen. 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 And trusting he's going to lead us through. Because we don't know how things are going to turn out even in Australia at the moment. But we're feeling there's a shift. But we need a, there needs to be a commitment in our hearts that we're going to see it through. Amen. We're going to see it through to God's end. Hallelujah. And joining last night's message with today's, Let's, let's be as John the Baptist and let's be a people who are going to prepare the nation 
for the Messiah to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we're going to be a people who make the path straight. Mm. That we're going to be a people who bring the high places down and the humble up mm. to make a highway, to make a roadway for our God yeah. in this nation. Yeah. And if that means that some of us are going to have to go through the valley of the shadow of death, so be it. Yeah. But we go through it with the shepherd. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We go through it walking hand in hand with the man yeah. from Galilee. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let's, yeah, let's stand. When we met Lyle Shelton in Canberra a few weeks back now, just for a short luncheon appointment with the team that was with us in the Canberra House of Prayer, it's about 12 of us I think that day with Lyle, and he did say to us that he is the managing director of ACL and their public voice, but on behalf of ACL he said we, we believe there's been a shift in this nation in March this year. We didn't have the time to draw him out on why he said that, but he said it with quietness and confidence and conviction. And he wouldn't have said it unless he thoroughly believed there was good reason to say that. So Lyle Shelton is a homegrown boy right here, attended the, the, um, the school we started in the building out the back in 1979. He's one of the foundation students, went through 12 years of Christian education. and. Um, and I personally and my family then had a lot to do with his family and sometimes we babysat the Shelton children when the parents would get to go overseas or whatever. So we had a lot to do with them and I hadn't seen Lyle in a meaningful way since 1987 to when we met at the Canberra House of Prayer. It was a lovely reunion and he was very honouring of my, myself and his heritage that he'd received. But, uh, so I just want to let you know that we have, God is raising some champions in this nation. Yes. And, and Lyle Shelton is the leader of the ACL, which now employs over 20 people, including lawyers. They've just hired a, a research man from Cambridge University to come and help them with research. They have representatives in most of the mainland states. We have Wendy Francis in, in Brisbane, who's a proven person of quality, a Christian person who stood up for election with the Family First a few years ago. Pretty sure she's been to Toowoomba speaking, because Rick, Rick, Rick Elmer's used to be involved with them then. So, and so with, with ACL, it's not just Lyle, there's state representatives like Wendy Francis who have been raised up as champions, who, who are un, unremitting in their commitment to Christ and, and, and Christianity, Christian yeah. principles, Christian values. And then there's, then there's, there's this man, Senator Corey Bernardi, who a few of us went and heard last Tuesday. And while he's not He's not a vocal Christian uh, politician like, like Danny Nani was presenting. He's, he's, he's presenting as a conservative. And he's got a, got, you know, a long history now of being conservative and of arguing even within the Liberal Party previously for, for conservative values. And, event, and it was, you know, he said, for all my troubles, I was just branded as a, as a maverick and as this and that by my own party, till eventually he after seeing what was happening with Trump, he was over there in the days of the election for a few, for three months, I think. Mm -hmm. So he was able to follow that whole Trump development very closely. He realised when he came home, his wife challenged him, well, Corey, what are you going to do? And he realised he had to step out to start a new party. So there's a conservative voice raising, rising. We went to a meeting that was packed out on, you, could, you know, people couldn't get tickets finally. It was packed out here at the city library. Nick said it was hundreds. Nick was one of the official helpers there. He said there's 160 tickets issued. They're all there. The Chronicle said there's only about 100, but there's more than 100. It's 150 tickets, but there was 160 there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and over 450 odd in, in Brisbane the next day. So, so this guy is, is, is getting a resonance, with, not with, only with Christians, a lot of Christians. Some pastors I saw in the, in the meeting over here the other day. Met, met one family I hadn't seen since 1987 there, a couple. Just amazing to see people coming out of the woodwork because there is a cause you know yeah. it says in the book of Sam we've just been reading mm. is there not a cause is there not a cause, mm. is there, not a cause? Mm. there is a cause right now Amen. and it doesn't matter whether you're a very senior person I, 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 I lay before you there is a cause what one of the men who introduced Corey the other day he said I'm involved in this party for my for the sake of my grandchildren mm. I want to try and preserve something in our nation yes. that our grandchildren can can enjoy yeah. and benefit from, not to lead them with a trillion dollar debt to pay off on our behalf of our generation. Mm. 
It's already half a trillion now. And it's, it's become that since John Howard left office. From, from, a, from a surplus of 50 billion. to 500 billion. It was a $50 billion surplus when John Howard Yeah, and now it's a 500 billion deficit, half a trillion. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I just want to encourage you that God, there has been a shift and God is raising champions. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether, I think it was in February that Corey declared his party. Mm -hmm. In five months they have 12,000 paid up members. Almost 30. I'm, I'm a member now, my wife. And, and I'm not, not trying to promote that party. I'm just saying God is raising champions mm -hmm. in this nation. Lyle mm -hmm. Shelton's one of them. Yes. And he's got a good support. They've got a good financial base just of all giving to the ACL. So they can employ such a staff now. And um, the founder, Jim Wallace, continues as the chairman of the board. And is, when Lyle first took that job, he said to Lyle, Lyle, you know you're my successor. And for seven years he trained Lyle. And then he stood aside and said, now, it's, now you take over. So Lyle had a peculiar form of discipleship, mm. very biblical. Mm. And uh, Lyle's organisation had established a training centre in a town just 20, 30 k's out of, uh, what's the place on the, on the, on the um, Yass Road out of Canberra? Queen Mary? You know? uh, no, it's a, that's a different road. Uh, Any, I don't know, it's got a longer name. That's with them, I think. Anyway, they've got a training institute there. And Nick knows a bit about they offer three months training to, to people under the age of 25 in Australia who want to go into public office, whether it be politics directly or okay. staffers for politicians. They've got 80 graduates already and some of those graduates have got key jobs among the establishment of the political people in Canberra. Mm -hmm. and, and Corey Bernard has got something similar going where he's training people for, to stand as conservatives in public office. So it's, it's, it's amazing, my brethren, God is raising champions in this yeah, nation. Amen. And, and the other thing I want to share for you, because we're on video to our brethren in the regions, that you know, God put in my heart last May, last year, to get into Canberra. August by August, Nick had arranged for us to go there and meet with Hillary. He already knew Hillary. We went and met Hillary at the Canberra House of Prayer. And when Janet and I arrived, the three of us went straight into the chapel, and worshipped the Lord and prayed and knelt down before the Lord for 20 minutes before we even knew each other. Mm. And God did something in our hearts. I knew from that moment that I was going to be involved in the Canberra House of Prayer in, in, in Canberra. So we went back then for Kilry's wedding in, in December. The wedding was great, so a few other things happened that were really a bit discouraging, but it didn't alter my resolve to get involved. We went back recently, as you know, we had four nights there, three full days of teaching. There was a team of six disciples together, all together with Counting Janet and I, who went there, and Hilary and Wayne joined us in every session and looked after it, and Hillary had advertised it, and just, just in each meeting there was one, two or three people would turn up. One day two Aboriginal people from Western Australia turned up, the, the main sister was, a, was a, a minister with her helper, wonderful connection, and that brother was here last week, he, was, he just came in the last night and sat beside me and heard me sharing it in, over a dinner, and he came up and spent six days with us. He went back a changed man, he's now committed to coming to the September training school here. Mm. So he's been coming like an emissary for, for Charlotte already because he got so changed just spending a few days with us. Hallelujah. I show him things in the scripture and said, I can't believe this. I've been reading the scripture for 30 years. Why haven't I seen that? Why, why are the translators not translated that honestly so I can see that Jesus is the great I am? Why have they done that, Paul? I said, I don't know, but it's because they lack the revelation. But thank God you're now getting it. And, and so we're planning, and we've submitted this to Hillary and Wayne to go back to be there by the, to travel by the 2nd of April. 1st of April is Resurrection Sunday. And on Tuesday, we want to start a school in the Canberra House of Prayer next year, 3rd of April. Hallelujah. So, Glenn and Lara, if you, can, if you can commit to come to that even for a few days, it'd be awesome. It, it's going to establish something in the nation that, that will be unstoppable. Hallelujah. God is going to allow us to establish an apostolic base in Canberra, in the very heart of the nation, Amen. to stand alongside people like the ACL. The, the, the Conservative Party that's raising up and other champions that God is raising. You know, at Hillary's wedding, I, happened, I got to meet Fred Nile. He was the celebrant. Got, had to shake his hand and had quite a talk with him. And he gave me some insights about what's going on in the nation politically. Um, you know, it's significant. And there were four men who had, we just had a very small part in that service, but there were three other men. Fred Nile, a retired liberal Christian MP called Alistair Webster, who's the patron of, of Gideon's in Australia, an elderly man who has a personal relationship with Bob Hawke, 
who claims to have led Mrs. Whitman to the Lord before she passed away. He was friends with golf, because he's in, in Parliament for, dec for some decades. He knew all these people, and he still visits Bob Hawke occasionally and witnesses to him. Bob Hawke respects this man of God. Hallelujah. He's never been a minister, he's been a politician, but held, held to the Christian way. Uh, and uh, it was Stephen who told me some of these facts. I had heard a little bit about it before, but not quite as much as Stephen just told me yesterday about Alastair Webster. Alastair Webster's Hillary's sort of spiritual father. He happened to sort of arrange that wedding a little bit for her. <laughs> and um, and Hillary herself is 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 a is a is, a, is raising as, as a champion in the nation. Yeah. She's she's British. She's of Jewish descent. Her family escaped from Germany just before the Second World War. On her, on her father's side, I think it is, and set up a chemicals factory in England to support the Allied cause against Germany, a Jewish family. So, and she only discovered that later on in life because she's brought up Roman Catholic or something. Because mm. you know, so many Jews have to hide their their real identity in in those wartime period. So, what am I saying? That that. That I'm, I'm starting to realise that what Lyle said is right. That, yeah. that something fresh is happening in the nation. Amen. The fact that nearly 13,000 people have already joined the Conservative Party. Mm. And a lot of them are not Christians, but they're Conservatives. Mm. And they believe in the Conservative cause. They don't agree with Malcolm Turnbull saying that, that the Liberal Party's always been a centrist party, that Bob Menzies would agree with him. That's absolute rubbish. Mm. Bob Menzies would not agree with Malcolm Turnbull. Not at all. Bob Menzies was very old-fashioned in his values. And... Um, and he held office from 49 to 72, wasn't it, Bruce? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and John Howard should have been a child of Bob Menzies, to some degree he was. But he's let us down on a few important areas. He needs to repent. But anyway, God is raising champions in the nation and he's raising RMA to take a, take a leadership profile in the nation. Not, not out there in the, in the public arena, no. probably so much, although yes. Nick may end up in that public arena more and more. As, as an mm -hmm. apostle of Jesus Christ, you know we're getting him ready for suffering, sweet, sweet. and uh, but but we have the opportunity to establish a base in Canberra, the other one, yes. and so okay. any of you who, who could commit to to come for at least one week, if not the full two weeks, in April to be part of that team that invades the capital, <laughs> that that just establishes. We've already mm -hmm. asked Tim and Leah to come, so Tim can can spruik his, his new understanding of Christian education. <laughs> We've asked uh, a, a Liz to come so she can share at length about the women's ministry to young girls in this city so that ministry can go from city to city in this nation. And, and, and Liz is like a hidden champion. Mm. You know, Letitia Shelton is, is the founder and, and the leader of this ministry, but, but she just stood aside and said, Liz, you lead the ministry in Toowoomba. That happened at the beginning of this year. Mm. And, and they, they pay Liz for her services now. She's worth twice as much, of course, but, but she is getting paid. She's working a little hard out. And, and, that, and now, as Nick said, she's had doors open into, into a workplace where she spoke to six different groups in two different business expressions in Pittsworth and Inglewood, two country towns out from Toowoomba. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And one young man walked into her session kicking chairs and swearing, had his cap pulled down, and he said, I don't want to go to church. No one's going to make me go to church. And by the halfway through the session, she, he's lifting her cap and looking Liz in the eye because her message of forgiveness is starting to capture his heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, an older man came to Liz after he said, he said, I, I, I'm a man who holds grudges, but what you said today has made me think. <laughs> and, he, and he then agreed to meet with the chaplain and try and sort out some of his problems. Wow. And, and the owner said he's, a, he's been a very bitter man, but, but just Liz, 20 minutes only she was given, changed his heart, amen? His God was with her. Folks, <laughs> there's been a change in this nation. Come on. We're going to take back education. Amen. We're going, we're, we're going to take back the workplace. Mm. We're going to take back the neighbourhoods. You, you may not have all heard on the video yet that, that we're, we, we've got this understanding now to raise up community chaplains. We've got school chaplains. We've got uh, hospital chaplains. But now we go and we get, we've got workplace chaplain out of this business in Pittsworth. Uh, the chaplain at the state school out there is part-time employed as chaplain in the state school and the rest of the day is in the business paid by the business owners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and now we've been talking with Kay for some months about community chaplains. Yes. Mm. That, that a person or a couple in a neighbourhood been, been, been coming under, being sent there by Shiloh to be a chaplain in that neighbourhood. Wear a badge. I'm chaplain Katie Germain in the, the Mortar State Toowoomba. 
And, and, and now our team supporting Kate, at least once a week they're going into the park and, and they've already met another committed Christian, uh, a Catholic lady who's, who's full on, who's already been walking the neighbourhood, praying for that neighbourhood and now she meets with, with, with Kay and Jeff and the team each Friday for prayer in the park. So we've got this idea of community chaplains and we've already got house churches happening aggressively in Toowoomba and realising that when you plant a church, that, that geographic area becomes the parish of that church. Mm. So we're resurrecting the old idea of parish, which is basically a geographic area. And, and so the, the church in Nick's house in Rockville, the parish is initially Rockville. The house church that's meeting in Darlene's house in, in, in Wilsonton, is, is, that's the parish is Wilsonton. And, and, and they're stretching out and including the, the, the estate of Mort in that outreach. We've got plans with, with, with Pastor Miriam to start another house church eventually in Centenary Heights. And Miriam's committed to in due time when God gives her the green light to start to plant that church in, in, in Centenary Heights. Hallelujah. We, our vision is to have a church in every suburb of every city in Australia and have chaplains radiating out from those churches to, to bring Christ back into the neighbourhoods. Amen. To, 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 to provoke a Christian community in every neighbourhood. Yes. Amen. Jesus. Yes. So it's, it's gone a lot past now just having having Christmas parties for the for the neighbourhood, etc. We've done a fair bit of that, and that, that's helped us to be in good standing with our, our near neighbours where we live. But it's much more than that now. Mm. Hallelujah. You're starting to catch it. Yeah. There has been a change. We, we've got significant outreach happening to the Indigenous folk. And, and, and it's based on love and relationship. It's just amazing the change that's happening. Mm. Just last week, the Aboriginal people, some Aboriginal brethren in, 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 in Arakoon paid for Rob and Kevin, I understand they haven't fully paid yet, but they put some money <laughs> towards their fares, they flew them up to Weeper, picked them up and took them down to Arakoon to be ministering in a funeral. And when that happened, the, the local church council have reconciled with Rob and Kevin and invited them back into the fold <laughs> and they're going back, after Rob's down here, they're going back to Arakoon now for two weeks to teach the elders on eldership and the foundations of the faith. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> 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 yeah. so, so there's, been a, there's been a shift in Arakoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so folks, I'm not trying to talk it up, I'm just telling you what's happening. There's been a shift in this nation, Stephen. Two Aboriginals and, uh, came in here, one went out with Catherine yesterday. Yes, two, two Aboriginal sisters dropped in here on Wednesday morning when the coffee shop sort of thing was open. Nick and the team were out in the streets, Brother Jeff sitting in here to receive people. Two Aboriginal sisters came in. Nick came back shortly after that and we, they found that they had lots of common links. One of them was Lily from Bogabilla, who Helen met last year, it took three or four years ago when she went out there with Diane and Luke. And, and Lily had just met. Coral in Tenterfield, mm, the the and so Lily went out with with Sis on Friday to the to the ladies' meeting out at Dalby, which oh, Coral yeah. hosted. With Coral hosted, Hallelujah! Woo. So, so folks, if you keep your hand on the plough, <laughs> keep keep your hand in the hand of the shepherd, you, you become part of this this overcoming company that Christ is raising in the nation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Christ, right on. now, there's a there's a barrister from England touring Australia. What's her name? Andrea Williams. Anyway, I sent it on your emails the other day. If you want to meet that lady, just switch on the video and, and you'll hear her speaking. She's got a strange English accent, but she's fair dinkum about Jesus. She says that Jesus is the key. That, that's the bottom line. And that's why she's doing what she's doing. Amen. And uh, is she the same one who, who helped those guys in the... I'm not two, sure. Two, anyway, I don't know enough about it. There might be one or two of these ladies, but... Two men were arrested in, in, a, in Britain by the police for speaking hate language because they were quoting from the King James Bible and they happened to mention something about Islam. They were taken to court by the police and found guilty of hate speech. They, they found this Christian barrister who took them on, on appeal and got the convictions overturned because these men had actually recorded what they were speaking and it was played in the court. They weren't speaking hate speech. They were just quoting from the King James Bible peacefully. They were speaking peacefully. And they were appealing to people to get saved. Mm. And so they got their convictions overturned. <laughs> if it's the same lady, I'm not sure, but this lady has had eight such cases recently where she's had convictions overturned Amazing. by representing the people because she's a convicted Christian barrister. Come on. Hallelujah. Convicted by the gospel, not convicted by the law. <laughs> you have to hear about that. So, folks, there is something happening. Yes. And, and Lyle says there are, there are active Christian lobbies in England, 
Canada and Great and, and the United States. They, they, they fail to stop the same sex stuff happening, but, but they're very, very active, clawing back. Amen? Mm. Because Christ is the king. Amen. He's the Amen. king of our communities. He's the king of our nations. He's the king of our cities. He's the king of the states. Amen? Hallelujah. I mean, our, our Australian states, one by one. And, and you notice this, there's been three ministers now have had to stand down or be kicked out by the state premier for different reasons. And the most recent, just a couple of days ago, for, for doing stuff on his private email and then deleting the whole thing. And he, he, he didn't offer to step down, so the Premier told him, step down, mate. Mm. You're not fit for, for ministerial office. There's something happening. Come on. And I don't know how to interpret this. You might know better, but, but Malcolm Turnbull's now lifting up Peter Dutton. Peter Dutton to a super ministry. Now, Peter Dutton's actually much more conservative than Malcolm Turnbull. <laughs> so it's like Malcolm is providing for his successor. Because <laughs> he doesn't want it to be Tony, Tony Abbott. <laughs> So he's prepared to allow Peter Dutton to become a bit of a superstar so that when Malcolm has to step aside later this year because his unpopularity continues to worsen then he's got someone ready to take over. And Because he doesn't want Tony Abbott to get back in and it would be probably be very difficult if Tony Abbott got back in. But Peter Dutton who's, who's there now with a super ministry maybe he's preparing him because Lyle, we asked Lyle who will replace Turnbull. Lyle, Lyle prophesied that Camp Turnbull Turnbull will not be there by the end of the year. He said, well, the obvious front runner is Abbott. But, it's, but whether that's the right thing, we don't know. And he said that, he mentioned this other guy, Dutton, Dutton, Dutton. and said, I don't know. But something major has developed even this last week with, with, with Dutton. Amen? Hallelujah. I think I've said enough, Nick. Excellent. I'll give you the idea. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? Amen. Yes. Amen. The thing I didn't really promote was the RI. That, you mentioned that again. That yeah. The, so this R, in the RI, like I said at the beginning, there's 15 schools that are being reached from this community into the local area. And we want to see that continue to increase. Mm. Amen. That more yes. schools will open. Yeah, we're, even, looking, we're looking for funding for that to get, yes, more, because, get into more schools. Yeah, because we'd love to be able to even pay Miriam a little bit to do more, more classes. Other, other ones from the community would be awesome to be able to give them to have some funding for our eyes so we can pay gay and that we can we can just have our eye teachers who are actually paid to do the RI teaching mm. coming out from here Amen. wouldn't that be awesome yeah, yeah. hallelujah New South Wales. yeah so we can we can we can pray for those sorts of things to happen amen, amen. for God to release the provision for this awesome outreach yeah. amen amen hallelujah so let's pray let's respond mm -hmm. to God and even in doing that, asking him how, you can ask God, you're probably already involved in some way already, but God, how can I be more involved and more cooperative with what you're doing in the nation already? Mm. How can I just slip into that slipstream yeah. of yeah. what you're doing, God, yeah. and just let go of whatever I've been holding on to just to get in that stream yep. and in that flow of what you're doing to yep. see this nation get saved, yep. to see this nation come to the knowledge of the truth. Get the goats out. Yeah, kick out those goats. Amen. And see, what, one thing that's in my belly is to get the Bible back into all the educational institutions. Amen. Into schools, into universities. Into houses. Into, yeah, into houses. To get the Bible back into that place as a legitimate, historical and spiritual book. See, people have put the Bible off in our society like it's just a religious book. No, it's not. It's a historical reality book. Amen. It's the story of God through history of mankind revealing himself. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible is actually revealing. It's actually history, his story. Mm -hmm. And it's real history, real events, real places. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so people need to, it needs to be established back into history classes in schools. That it's Amen. actually a history resource. Yes. So we can find out about Middle Eastern history especially. Mm -hmm. And how that affected the whole world yeah. through the ages from the beginning. Yeah. Hallelujah. It can be used in archaeological things because they're finding many archaeological things that actually prove that the Bible is true. Well, yeah, I saw one thing. They found Joseph's tomb, you know. They found a place in Goshen where there's a, hole, where there's a palace and in the, in the, in the uh, courtyard of that palace there's 12 tombs. And one of the tombs is a very big one with a pyramid like it was for a very important official. Except the, And there's a statue in that tomb that's twice the size of a man, of a man sitting down. And it's not an Egyptian man. It looks like a Semitic man, they say. And he even has a hairdo like a Semitic man, apparently. 
And even they can see that on that statue, there was a coat on that man of many colours. It's striped with different colours even. You can see some of the colours. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Hallelujah. I got really excited when I saw this recently. <laughs> it's awesome. Father, we thank you. Yeah. Yes. God, that you are doing wonderful things in our day. Yes. And Lord, thank you. And Lord, I pray that you give all of us here eyes to see Amen. what you're doing. Mm. Jesus walked around as a son of God saying, I only do what I see my father doing. Yes. Jesus, you had eyes to see what the Father was doing. Give us eyes to see what you are doing, God, so that we can slip in with what you are doing and just cooperate, put our hand to the plough and do what you are doing in the nation. Lord, that we would be your hands and feet for real, that we would be the body going into all sorts of areas of society, Lord. Lord, wherever you've called us, whether it be public, whether it be in the community, whether it be in a workplace, whether it be whatever it is, Lord, but you've given us a part to play in reaching this nation for Jesus and bringing back the reality of God into every area of life within the nation. And so, Father, I pray for your anointing, your grace to be upon us, to bring recovery of sight to the blind so that we can see, that we can see what you're doing. Father, thank you for that release now in Jesus' name. A release for our eyes to open, to have revelation of what you're doing. And God, I, I thank you that you have a particular calling, Lord, that you've got good works prepared beforehand for all of us to walk in. Unique good works that you've predestined us to walk in to again subdue the earth and have dominion as sons of God. Father, we give you all the glory this morning. We thank you for Brother Stephen, Lord among us, and Lord even coming at this time with the messages he has. Yes. Father, we thank you for the timing again. Yes. Of, of Him coming and speaking into our lives and imparting Amen. into our lives. Amen. Father, we, we just pray that we'll be able to take this impartation Amen. now, to take this grace that you're releasing even this morning, Amen. and use it for your glory. Yes. Lord, to not let it just lie dormant, yep. but to get active, even immediately, yes. into what you've called us for, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Ha, ha, ha.